Hello everyone and welcome back to another Animal Artists Collective video. The AAC is an initiative founded by Denise Soden and Jennifer Charlie to raise awareness about animal conservation through education and art. Each piece created for the AAC is available for purchase with half the proceeds going to animal conservation and welfare. This is actually the last round of the AAC, and I wanted to thank Denise and Jennifer for their hard work in planning and facilitating the collective over these past couple years. It's been a privilege to be able to contribute in my small part. The last AAC theme focuses on the animals of Australia in order to support the people doing their best to aid Australian wildlife in the wake of the recent devastating bushfires. I'll be doing two portraits in this video, both of which will be available on my Etsy shop. I will be donating 75% of the proceeds to animal rescues in Australia. First up, I'm painting a golden swamp wallaby. This is a specific golden morph of swamp wallabies, um, Wallabia bicolor, that is particularly beautiful to me anyway. Wallabies, like many animals in Australia, are marsupials, which means that they carry their young in a pouch after birth so that they can finish growing safely. The widespread presence of marsupials on Australia is largely due to Australia's location, removed from the rest of the continents. Once, Australia was part of a supercontinent called Gondwana or Gondwanaland, which was comprised of present-day Australia Antarctica and their surrounding islands. Gondwana split from Pangaea sometime around the Triassic period, about 200 million years ago, and persisted into the Jurassic. This was the time of the dinosaurs, and mammals were still just beginning to diverge into marsupials, placental mammals, and egg-laying mammals or monotremes. By the end of the Cretaceous, the Australian continent was breaking away from Antarctica and becoming its own little thing, which means that for the entirety of the Cenozoic era, Australia was on its own in terms of evolution. Marsupials were the dominant mammals. They diversified to fill every niche that placental mammals would fill on the other continents. Now, there are definitely large concentrations of other mammals on Australia now, and that is partly because of humans introducing other species. Dingoes, though they've been around for quite a while now, were actually introduced by seafaring cultures from Asia. Livestock was brought over by English colonialists. Feral cats and rodents put increased survival pressure on native species. Because of humans, both the animal populations and the climate have changed drastically in a very short amount of time. There's no doubt in my mind that the bushfires are as bad as they are, partly due to climate change, or maybe even mostly due. I painted this pretty wallaby with uh, watercolor for the base wash, and the rest of it was finished in gouache. There's a lot of really nice yellow and golden ochre in it, um, which I used to create that sort of glowing effect in the yellow fur. And the dark colors that I used to basically um, carve out these lighter glowing yellow areas are mixed mostly from perylene violet and a few earth tones. The next portrait here is a cassowary, which brings us to the birds of Australia. They're just as wonderful as the marsupials, and birds of course have the perk of being able to fly, which makes it possible for species to flow from other continents while Australia drifted away on its own. There are so many birds in Australia, and I follow a couple photography pages in Australia dedicated solely to birds, um, just because there's so many to, to admire and see. Um, they have everything from penguins to cockatoos and splendid fairy wrens to wedge-tailed eagles. The diversity of parrots in particular is really stunning, like every color of the rainbow. And you can tell that people have always thought so because a lot of the common pet parrots in the pet trade are actually native to Australia. Cassowaries remind me a lot of dinosaurs, um, which, you know, makes sense because they are dinosaurs, uh, just without the teeth. Um, even their calls are pretty dinosaurian. They have like this low booming noise that carries through the jungle and uh, it's definitely not a stretch to imagine dinosaurs doing that as well. Especially given that, you know, their environment would have been quite lush, um, uh, similar to the, the more jungly parts of Australia. 
as someone who works in a paleontology museum, I'm always interested in where the past is echoed in the present. So big, noble birds like cassowaries um, and sarimas are really good examples of that. The blue skin and the keratinous crests are really good inspiration for reconstructing extinct animals, but also for inventing fantastical new ones. This one was painted in a similar way. I used sort of a light watercolor wash to start off um, with some ochres and some burnt siennas, and then I layered in the gouache over top of that. The um, blue skin is a mix of titanium white. Um, you could also use zinc white for sure, but I did want to tone down the blue a little bit. Um, it's got some cerulean blue, some ultramarine blue, and some phthalo blue in there, so a mix of, of a lot of different blues to sort of get the shifts in the color of, of the skin. There's a little bit of quinacridone red at the bottom for where the skin of the neck begins to turn a bit red. Um, I've been really enjoying uh, quin red lately. Uh, I've been mixing it with yellow and it makes these really, really nice, nice oranges. I just think it's so beautiful. And then the rest of the details on this guy are made of a bunch of earth tones all mixed together. Um, <laughs> I couldn't tell you which ones. My gouache palette um, sort of eventually gets to this stage where everything has sort of blobbed together um, because I'll run out of one pigment, so I'll use another one and I'll put it in the same place. Um, and then that way I get really varied earth tones, especially. Um, my brighter colors tend to stay alone, but the earth tones get all mixed together, which, I don't know, I think it, it, it keeps things interesting and it keeps them mottled and realistic, um, sort of to avoid, you know, going too heavy on, on one pigment or another. Uh, there's also a lot of Payne's Grey, um, especially in the bill and the, and the crest there, and the little lines on the crest sort of to give it that uh, keratin detail, uh, those are done with Naples Yellow. Again, the background is carved out with some perylene violet mixed with some earth tones. Um, and I really like this technique for preserving the, the lighting, for example, on the bill and the front of the crest there where it's sort of yellowish. Um, it keeps the lighting pale because it's only the watercolor wash showing through. Um, and then that high contrast between the dark background and the lighter foreground just works super well for portraits. It's a really nice trick um, that I like to use. Basically, if you're doing a portrait of, of an animal or anything and you find that it's not really standing out enough, you know, it's not it's not got that punch that you really want it to have, put a put a dark background on it. I I mean, I just think it's an easy way to to bring something up to a, a much more dramatic level dark purple, even black on my digital portraits. I do like to just lock in a black background. Um, but I always paint it in around the subject at the end, like like after. Um, you don't start with the dark color. So that way you're painting into the forms, you're painting out of the forms, um, and it just gives your painting a little more interest. So even though this is the last official Animal Artist Collective video, uh, and the collective for now, um, who knows, maybe not forever, is disbanding, I will definitely be painting more animals here on my YouTube channel, and I'll be looking for fun ways to start my own donation initiatives. So if you'd like to see where that takes me, hit the button below to subscribe. Feel free to comment as well, maybe there's some uh, some places you'd like to see me think about donating, or some animals you'd like to request that I paint, or even if you have some ideas of tutorials you would like me to do, leave that in the comments below and I'll definitely take a look. I don't always respond to every comment, but I try to read every single one, and if you get a little heart, that definitely means I've read it. Again, I'd like to thank Denise and Jennifer for their hard work, as well as all of the permanent guest and unofficial participants in the collective. Together we've raised so much money for nature conservation, and that's what really counts. Before joining this collective, I didn't really grasp how easy and straightforward it is to, to make donations to animals with my art. 
Um, and I get so many nice newsletters now from all the places that the AAC has allowed me to donate to. So I get little updates on birds they've saved or species that they're focusing on. And it's just really nice. I love mail. I love snail mail. Um, and so getting those, those little things, you know, makes me feel like I'm, I'm doing a good job out there. <laughs> If you would like to purchase either or both of these portraits, I'll leave the links to their listings in my Etsy shop in the description below. I really hope you enjoyed this video and all of the other Animal Artist Collective videos, both from this theme and from past months. And I will see you in the next upload. Bye!